Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for July 15th of 2023. Well, it is titled Webb's first deep field. So what do we see here? Well, this is an image released now one year ago for when the James Webb Space Telescope was just beginning its observations of the universe. And this is a deep field image. In other words, you're looking at an area that wouldn't seem like it has a whole lot in it. And you point the telescope there for a long period of time. Now, the Hubble Space Telescope famously did this, but it took weeks and weeks of exposures to bring out the detail. This similar image with the Webb Space Telescope only took about 12 hours to record this. Now the bright spiky objects are all stars within our galaxy. So those are stars and even though some of them look very bright, this is a very dim area, they're still extremely faint stars uh, in compared to the stars you see at the in the night sky. We see the spiky diffraction pattern associated with the optics of the telescope and that occurs for any point source. So anything that is just a dot of light like a star will have that kind of pattern. Galaxies, on the other hand, are extended sources and will not show that. So everything that is spiky here is a star. Everything that is not is a galaxy. Now you note that some of the galaxies are highly distorted. So as you look at those, you can see a great distortion, some of them pulled into arcs. Now we often see distortion of, of galaxies due to interacting with other galaxies. However, here much of what we're seeing is the light of those more distant galaxies passing through this cluster and being distorted. So gravity acts as a lens. Now we have to remember this is what Einstein tells us in general relativity that that gravity is not a force between objects as we learned from Isaac Newton, but how but is instead a bending of space and time. And due to that bending of space and time, not only are objects paths changed, but light paths are changed as well and can be very distorted when passing through the massive gravitational field of a large cluster of galaxies like this. So in some cases, these can be different objects. In other cases, they are actually multiple images of the same distant galaxy following two different light paths to reach us. So we can learn a lot about the galaxies from studying this. And in fact, we can learn about the cluster that is doing the lensing. We use that to understand how much gravity must be present in that cluster. We can figure out how much material must be there. And this is one of the things that confirms the existence of dark matter in the universe, some kind of unseen material that interacts only through its gravity, but gives off no light. And when we say no light, that means no light of any kind, not just visible light, but no x-rays, gamma rays, radio waves or anything else. It is completely dark but does interact through gravity lending to the gravitational lensing that we can see in our image today around this cluster. So that was our picture of the day for July 15th of 2023. It was titled Webb's first deep field. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture previewed to be view with a thrill. So we'll see what that is about tomorrow. And until then, have a great day, everyone. And I will see you in class.